Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm Asa and I'm super excited because it's new tool day. Here in my basement, I run a small print farm and I have a number of Prusa Mark III 3D printers. On two of those units, I have the multi-material upgrade. If you have a Prusa and you want to do complex multicolor prints, you'll need a multi-material upgrade. As you probably know, the MMU2, the previous generation of multi-material upgrade, is notoriously unreliable. I made two videos on this topic. It took me dozens of hours and multiple weekends to finally get my MMU2s working reliably. Fortunately, at the moment, I finally got them pretty dialed in. At this point, it's rare that I've got issues with my MMU2s. In general, I can print and forget about them and they work quite reliably. Recently, Prusa released the latest generation, the MMU3. This should further improve reliability. It should improve speed of filament changes. So today I'm gonna do an unboxing. I'm gonna upgrade my MMU2s to MMU3s. I'll do some test prints and then I'll give a full review. If you like this type of content, please subscribe so you get more similar videos in the future. Now let's get to unboxing. As per usual, the Prusa packaging is excellent. Everything is packaged and organized really nicely. If you're using the upgrade kit from an MMU2 to an MMU3, it'll come with enough PETG for you to print all of the printed parts. Just keep in mind you'll need about 48 hours of print time to make all of the printed parts. If you're going with an upgrade kit, the first step is disassembling your existing MMU2. Interestingly, there's not a huge amount of parts reuse. It's mainly just the motors and some bearings and shafts. After disassembly, the overall MMU3 assembly is pretty quick. For me, this whole process took a little over half a day. That included disassembling the MMU2 for parts reuse, disassembling the buffer assembly for parts reuse, then assembling the MMU3, and upgrading the overall extruder assembly. You'll also need to flash new firmware to the MMU3. The buffer assembly is upgraded as well as the unit. I'll talk about this in the review. The buffer assembly improvements are really good. There are two different types of spool holders. I have the vacuum formed ones. There's a little plastic clip that you print so that you can attach a PTFE tube to the spool holder. One of the improvements is a much easier process to load in filament. First, you load filament through one of these cassettes in the buffer assembly. And after you've loaded filaments into the buffer assembly, it's pretty easy to load filaments into the MMU2. If you look carefully at the bottom of the screen, you can see the filament going into the MMU2 assembly as I push it through the cassette. Then the MMU3 grabs onto it. Overall, this is much easier than the MMU2. Now it's on to a test print. I kicked off a torture test with hundreds of filament changes and left it running for a few hours. I also couldn't resist printing some MMU sheep. I finished upgrading both of my MMU2s to MMU3s and overall it went really well. I did a couple of days of test prints with over a thousand color changes and I had one failure. Fortunately, I was able to unjam that failure and continue and save that print. I was really hoping to get to a thousand color changes with no failures, but at least it was recoverable. I'll go into the full details of what I like and what I don't like about the MMU3, but the short, short version is, it's great, and I recommend you get it if you're thinking about it. 
Starting with the drawbacks, I think the biggest issue in general is that the MMU-3 is not yet compatible with the flagship Prusa bedslinger, the Prusa Mark IV 3D printer. I'm confident Prusa will fix this eventually, but for now, if you want an MMU-3 with your Prusa Mark IV, you're unfortunately going to have to wait. My next complaint is about form factor. As you can see, the MMU-3 with all of the spools takes up a lot of space. It's not particularly efficiently packaged. There's no overall structure or mounting. It's pretty messy compared to the layout of some of the bamboo products at essentially the same price point. In my setup, I've got my Prusa enclosures and I mount my spools just on a rod over the enclosure so things are reasonably tidy. That brings me to the next con. The spool holders I think are garbage and I recommend you don't use them. The issue is, when your spool is running low on filament, it gets light, and I've had the MMU pull the spool over and have it just roll across the floor. I recommend you mount the spool on something instead of just leaving it on the spool holder. My last complaint is my typical one for Prusa products, cost and lead time. The standalone unit is $300, and the upgrade kit from an MMU2 to an MMU3 is $90. That's before shipping, and that's before I get excited every time I open up the Prusa website and add a bunch of other stuff to my cart. It's a pretty high price point, but I happen to think it's worth it. Lead times are getting better, but it still took between three and four weeks between ordering and getting my two upgrade kits. In this day and age, I'm really used to ordering something and have it show up in a couple of days, if not the next day or the same day. As you can tell though, I'm kind of grasping at straws because in general I really like the unit and I'm happy with it. The biggest pro of the MMU-3 is that it's fixed some of the major drawbacks of the previous generation. I've read a lot of reports of folks online struggling with the electronics design of the MMU-2. They seem to have fixed that on the MMU-3 with the design of a small buddy board. I never had these issues on my two units, but it seems to be pretty common. The next big design improvement is these removable cassettes in the buffer assembly. This makes it much, much easier to load and unload filaments into the MMU-3. I like this design enough that I think I'll actually incorporate it back into my setup. The next thing I really appreciate is the upgrade ability. I'm so glad I could upgrade my MMU-2s to MMU-3s. It gives me confidence that Prusa will keep maintaining these products over time and improve them. And it also gives me confidence that I can strip this apart and repair it if anything goes wrong. At the end of the day, they're not that complex mechanically, and I'm confident I can strip this thing and rebuild it. Prusa put in a lot of effort to redesign the mechanics, and it should have increased reliability overall. I don't have nearly enough test data, but I assume they've done their homework, and these are more reliable than the MMU-2s. The last thing I'll mention, which I have covered before in other videos, there are deals out there if you're willing to troll Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, and the like. Last year, even before the Prusa Mark IV came out, I was able to get a Mark III S Plus with an MMU-2 for $450. That was an awesome value, especially considering now I've upgraded it to the MMU-3. So my point is, yes, cost is high when you're buying new, but I'm confident in buying a lot of this material used, especially because I know I can repair it now that I've gone through the initial setup and build. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you want more content on building, making, and crafting. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.